This is Brandon Winerdy for SuperKaiju.com, and I'm here with the voice of Salacious Crumb, Mark Dotson. Also, the Gremlins, also Force Awakens. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Well, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, well, let's talk about a recent exciting thing that happened. You came back to the Star Wars universe to voice some patrons in Maz's Cantina for yeah. Force Awakens. Yeah, that was really exciting. Um, yeah, Matt Wood, the sound guy... Um, uh, great sound man. Um, he he got in touch and said we we you know we want you for Force Awakens and uh, I was now I'll tell now if he ever hears this now I would kind of be embarrassed but I'll finally tell it on camera. Uh, when I got that I was I literally ran and I was in my studio in my control room and he contacted me and I just went I started running in circles. Are walking very quickly, going, "Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I can't believe I'm really they really called me to do this because I had seen him at D23 and he said he would. But you know, people talk, you know, and and uh, and he actually did, you know, and that was I think in August of that year. So then it wasn't until uh, October, and the movie was coming out in December. But so as time went on, I was like, Ah, they're probably not. He, you know. And then here it was, the middle of October, I need you here in a couple of weeks. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I can't believe it. So it was just really exciting to be brought back. And like I told Matt, it was Salacious Crumb was the first voice I ever d did. And so this was my, my life career coming full circle. It came full circle. And what a, what a good time. Now I'm in my late 50s. And, you know, when I started, I was in my early 20s. And. So it was just, it just felt really good and it was a wonderful session. A whole bunch of great voice actors and actresses were, uh, were in the session and, and I got to do the salacious, kind of his laugh. Right. Yeah. Um, because salacious is smaller, so he's, ah, 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 ah. you know, he's, yeah. you know, but, uh, but so he, so we made him a little bigger. Right. And the cool thing was when you're doing ADR, you're watching the film right. on a big, big screen and you watch a piece of it, like maybe a minute of this part of the film, and then, you know, when you're in an ensemble, they're like, well, you know, one guy will go, I'll do that guy, and I'll do that guy, and, and we're all doing it at the same time as it's going. Well, when that came up, and, and you're sitting there watching going, I wonder which guy I would be good to do. And, I was, and when that came up, I was like, I saw this character slam his hand down and go, there's no sound yet. And I went, oh, I, I want to do his laugh, I hope. And, and sure enough, Matt looks over and he goes, Salacious, I need your laugh. And I was like, oh, God, I think I blushed. I think I was like, that felt great. So I got up and did it, <laughs> you know, when he, yeah. when he wins. So his name's Cretinus. Yeah, I was about to say, do you have a, did you his, kind of create a backstory for him? Well, they did. Yeah. His name's Cretinus. His brother is Prashi. That's who he's playing the board game with. They are swindlers, mm -hmm. and they hang out at Mazas, and uh, they're swindlers. Uh, they are identical twins, and they use the fact that they're twins in their swindle uh, is the deal. So, yeah, that's pretty much their, I do, I their deal. I remember hearing it. I remember, like, watching the movie, and I hear it, and I was like, I know, I know that laugh. Yeah, I was like, there it is. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you worked with Lucasfilm before, Battle for Endor and the Ewok movies. and Endor. Yeah. Yeah. And I did do some of the Marauders yeah. in, in Battle for Endor, too. But I'm mostly known in that for uh, as Teak, the yeah. little hyper. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Teak yeah, for people that don't remember right. the battle for Endor. I should have said that. done Cretinus for you too, because some people would be like, "Well, I don't." Remember His that. name never comes up. Right. They never, like nobody ever says Salacious right. Crumb's name. Right. But that's uh, from, yeah. So anyway, there you go. There you go, and everybody knows Salacious. I don't need to show you that. You know. But yeah. Do you have any parts maybe you've played over the years that you're the most excited about or the ones that you're the most the passionate about? Yeah, there's no question. The one that's nearest, dearest to my heart is Salacious Crumb. I love Salacious. I love that whole scene. I think that the, the throne room scene is among the greatest scenes in the Star Wars films. You know, it's an iconic scene. It had, if you, if you really think about it, everybody is, ends up in in Jabba's right. at that time. Right. And not only that, but the beautiful slave Leia, right. as Carrie looks as hot as she ever looked, right? right? I mean, I'm salacious, I can say that. But um, uh, salacious is definitely 
uh, the one that I love the most. He gave me my start, and to be in there with Hans and Carbon Freezing, you got Slave Leia, I'm sitting with her. Uh, Mark uh, Luke comes in in the black cloak, R2, C3PO, uh, Jabba, um, Lando, I think. It, everybody is in that, that scene, so um, that's so great to be a part of that. And I just love, I always loved like Tony McVeigh sculpted Salacious. And at that time, there really hadn't been a, I don't think, a creature or critter in anything that really looked like that, you know? And uh, Tim Rose puppeteered him and, and gave him so much life. Um, I love Salacious, I really do. I, and, and his laugh worked, you know, it really worked. And then I worked with Ben Burt. And like I say, it was the first thing I ever did. So it gave me my life in this business. Um, Tony and Chris Wayless, when, who did made Salacious, shortly thereafter went on to make the Gremlins and do Gremlins. And there they gave, I got the call from them that, hey, they want to know who did Salacious. And we told them, and they want you to come and do this Gremlins movie. And I was like, well, I thought, I thought it was one of those pranks. I'm like, why are you bullshitting me? Why are you doing this to me, man? Don't play. And they're like, no, for real. They want you to come do this. And I'm a carpenter up at Skywalker Ranch when this, I'm like, this can't be, you know? Um, so then it led right into Gremlins. And, uh, and then, of course, then it was, well, you've got to get an agent to negotiate this one. Um, and, and you've got to get in the union. You've got to get in SAG. And once I was there, the agent says, uh, well, hey, as long as we're representing you, you want to try out for other things? And I was like, well, I mean, sure, I probably won't get anything, but I'll try, you know. And lo and behold, I started booking things with Disney. And, you know, and it was like, maybe this is what I am supposed to do. Because I wanted to be a director someday. I wanted to be behind the scenes. Which, being a voice actor, you still are kind of behind the scenes. I like that, you know. So, there's my whole story right there. Really. Well, maybe just final question. You kind of mentioned it, but for the people that don't know, what was the process to become Salacious Crumb? What was kind of, how did you get that role? Well, really, the, the process was that I was a carpenter at that point. I started out a laborer. I had moved up to Marin County from L.A. And I was, um, at that point, I was working out at Skywalker Ranch and, Ben Burt, I let him know. He found out. I had a raccoon. There's a whole story I had that he was looking for chirps, and I just happened to have a raccoon. It got around that Ben Burt's looking for a raccoon chirps. I said, I have a raccoon. And so he came to record her, and she didn't chirp. She so said, well, I'm going to leave this, uh, an old Sony reel-to-reel, -reel, you know, that they had the field so, uh, and the mic, and showed me how to do it. And he said, so when she starts chirping, I want you to get it. So I was like, okay, and um, well, since I had the thing, I was like, well, I might, I had already done impersonations. So I was like, well, I'll do some impersonations, you know, on, and so when I took the reel back to him, I'm like, we got the chirps and we got, I did some stuff. I hope you don't mind, you know, I didn't, he's like, oh no, great, I'll, I'll listen, I'll see what I think, you know. I think I did like Struther Martin and, you know, what we have here, you know, a failure to communicate, but anyway. And was, I did some pirates and yeah. some things, and and he said, "Those are, you're actually pretty good, and I will call you." Yeah. And he said, "In fact, why don't you try out for this?" <laughs> well, it ended up being ET, which I didn't get the part, right. but my first audition was ET, and then shortly thereafter, because he did the sound for that, you know, um, for Spielberg, and then shortly thereafter, when he was working on Jedi. He thought of me and actually said, why don't you come over and try out, you know? And so I ended up getting salacious, you know, and it was great. Yeah. Well, uh, I really appreciate your time, the talking, and thank you so much. This was so great. Yeah. That's it. Yeah.